Hello, I am Belinda Coolerwine from Husk and Vine and I'm a creator of wearable art. And today I will be showing you how to create some wearable art out of all the things that I enjoy. And I also wanted to talk to you about some of those things that I enjoy. So apart from beautiful pods and snake skins and berries and all those sorts of goodies, something that I like to feature in a lot of my work is actually feathers. So you will see this is a beautiful feathered number that I've got here. Behind me there's some feathers, uh, more over the other side, but I really enjoy foraging for feathers. So I wanted to um, show you something that I can create with those feathers. Here we have Arnie. So this is how I actually achieve a lot of my foraging. I wait for my girls to drop their feathers. I'm always collecting and voila, then we make some beautiful wearable art. So let's get to it. Pop you to the side so we can get creating. Now what we're going to be making is a beautiful versatile neck piece which can also be worn as a head piece. So how we're going to do that is the first thing we're going to need is a piece of this coconut fibre. So this is something that you would find just in a palm tree. You'll find, you'll, you'll actually after watching this you'll realise how many things that you haven't noticed but this just grows naturally in a lot of palms and it's a beautiful product. So what we're going to do is just tear a piece off. Although you could cut it, it just wouldn't keep that nice raw edge, edge that we're after. So we're just going to, we're actually gonna use a little bit of scissor support and just take a piece off like that. We'll just put the other piece on the floor there and I'll just fray the end so it still looks quite beautiful. So the first thing we're gonna do is we need a piece of, I like to use leather, keeping it all natural and a couple of these beautiful sticks just to give it a bit of length and interest. So, what we're going to do is first tie the sticks to the center of the leather. So this is going to be the center of our neck piece or head piece. And I'll show you and explain what I mean by making that versatile. So just like so. Then we're going to get our trusty hot glue. Pop a little bit on the back there. And attach it to our coconut fiber. So that's what I would use as a base because it gives you a really nice edge so you can do whatever you like from here and you've got that really earthy, rustic, raw edge as opposed to, you know, something that would be quite stiff and boring. Um, so I, of one, love snake skins. So that might stress a few people. I know my mum's not a big fan of my creations with snake skins, but I think they are just gorgeous. So just going to pop a little bit here and here. Now this is just the base. So what we'll do is we'll build up. So we'll kind of have the outsides further out and then we'll build into our focal. So I often have an idea in my mind of what I think I want to use towards the focal. And that might be something either fresh or something dry. So over here, I just wanted to bring your attention to, this is one that I've created that's fully dry. So that will last on and on. Uh, this one is both fresh and dry. So again, with the sticks and the coconut fiber. So what we'll do is we'll do Possibly a bit of both because I'm just looking at this great big beautiful purple succulent and I'm thinking that could be our focal. So let's get back to it. Now of course we know what we're all about and that's feathers. So let's see what kind of feathers we've got here. Oh these are a little bit special. So we'll get a couple of these in our focal because it's not really a husk and vine piece without some foraged feathers. So again, a little bit of glue there. That's actually from my Barnabelda, that one. I'm very fortunate that I have some friends in the industry of chickens because they're always collecting things for me as well. So I get a really large range of different colors and different textures and Quite fortunate, really. Um, I'm also thinking we might want to utilize this beautiful lichen, so let's get him on there too. Bit of glue again, pop him in there. 
And I'm very into these beautiful, they call them bunny tails. So this little grassy little number. So let's get those and just put them in there on the side. I think we're ready for our piece of resistance. So when you're cutting your succulents, I like to do it maybe the day before because you don't want that bit wet and fleshy, otherwise it doesn't stick as well. So if you collect them, I would think the day before and then get them all trimmed up to how you want them. Then you know that they're just going to take to the hot glue and you're good to go. Just put a little bit of pressure on there, wait for it to set. Beautiful, so far so good. And a bit of celosia in this one I think because it's got that nice pinky shade so it's going to match in nice with that purpley succulent. For those of you that are succulent lovers, her name is Debbie. Well she's a sun loving succulent, they can take um, more sun than a lot of succulents, which is nice to know because I don't know if you know this, but succulents actually really like 50% sun um, as opposed to a whole day. Just gonna cut off those little bits that I don't need. Put another little bit over there so it kind of carries through like so. Just clean off my little workstation there. all these wonderful things. Perhaps we need a bit of my second favorite, which is the wasp nest. Pop that just in there behind the succulent so it's got a bit more dimension. So we've got a three dimensional kind of feel there. You could go crazy and you could just keep gluing and you could keep adding, but it's up to you and it's a complete expression of your creativity. So whether it's more or less, it's whatever you feel like on the day. But I feel like I've got these amazing succulents so I might as well use them. And I'm just going at the back there because I'm wanting to give it a little bit more dimension. I feel like that's how you make things more appealing is by giving them the element of the 3D because nobody likes something that's completely flat when it comes to wearable art. Pop you there too. So I'm just gonna trim those down a little bit because I wanna show you how this could be worn as a neck piece. It possibly wouldn't work all that well on me because I haven't got one of those lovely tall necks. But as you can see, this is our creation. And on the right beautiful slender neck, it could be very glamorous. Alternatively, a beautiful headband. So that concludes the wearable art mixture of dry and fresh using all natural and foraged and found treasures. Thank you for watching. I'm Belinda Coolerwine from Husk and Vine.